This is Cybert signing into Kane's Wrath on the map Tiki Turmoil, as always, featuring the demon walrus man under the bridge in the north, playing the green, playing steel talons. This is Shock Trepid. And on the bottom left, as the cyan nod, we have Futurama. Welcome, Guaspari. I've never actually asked you, but is that how you pronounce your name? I've said your name lots it is, of times, it is. but okay, so I, I'm at least somewhat right in that case. But welcome, Guaspari. Super glad to have you here for this dual cast, for this best of seven show match. What do you do more, YouTube or live streaming on Twitch? Streaming, yeah. I haven't really gave YouTube a proper shot ever since quite a few years ago um it's more or less just been when i uploaded some videos just playing with some games a few friends years ago but yeah just streaming mostly kane's wrath nothing really else i enjoy more playing um whether i'm casting a show match sponsored by shanks or that or just playing random games yeah either or on twitch yeah so if you guys have been watching the channel for a while you almost certainly have seen a game from guaspari sometimes it's a goofy game involving a catalyst cannon that just destroys the entire map. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they're a little bit more straightforward, a little bit more straight up. But if you want to catch some great Kane's Wrath live streaming, both playing and casting, check out Guaspari's stream. It'll be linked in the description. A little bit of house cleaning, housekeeping before we get further into this. A huge, huge thanks to Yashi Murasan for sponsoring this show match. Their Instagram will be in the video description so you can check that out. And uh, for those of you who don't have Instagram, you won't learn that that's actually a dog's Instagram. So Abijit sent me a message and was like, hey, I want to sponsor a show match. And I was like, who should I say? What should I say your name is? And he's like, you know what? Make it my dog sponsoring the show match. So this show match, this best of seven for $75 is brought to you by a dog, Yashi Murasan, who will be linked in the description. Uh, that's a first for Kane's Wrath. I don't think we've ever had an animal sponsor a show match before, but we've got one today. I mean, the year's 2023, Cyber. You never seen ever of anything, right? So, it, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm welcome to more possibilities. <laughs> Dog sponsoring Kane's Wrath. Anything's possible at all. Maybe next year we can get a horse and uh, we'll see how this MRT Pitbull attack squad goes. But Steel Talons versus Nod. Uh, how do you feel about that matchup in 2023? I mean, Steel Talons, as of uh, definitely in R20, have been buffed really, really nicely. They are a prominent faction now. I'd say they're probably even one of the best factions. Against Nod, I feel like they're still really good. However, Nod's um, late game with Stealth Tanks can be quite prominent. But Steel Talons' early game, definitely with this MRT Pitbull push, can cause a Nod player to have the laser turret, infantry, definitely an overspend. And we did see that Barracks get dropped by Futurama very early on. I mean, he expanded, which on Tiki Turmoil, it's a short walk to your natural expansion. But he expands, he drops the refinery, and then immediately afterwards, he drops that safety Barracks. He starts producing rockets. Futurama was very much expecting and predicting this kind of an attack coming out here from Shock Trepid. Pitbull goes down, just trades on both sides for the current moment, poking and prodding from both players. But nothing of significance is gained here by Shock Trepid in this attack. Yeah, I was just going to say, to be honest, like, despite that attack, um, he smacked very well, 2 and 4 in the expansion, tier 2 just put down as well now. Um, and to be, to be fair, with the defense of Futurama, he's also macroed very well, right? So no one, he hasn't really gained an advantage by just stalling him. He's able to, you know, not do too many units. He's going for an upgrade now. It's probably Dozer Blades. Second Wolf which goes out as well. So I want to say he's going to counter attack in a second, but I don't really see him splitting his Scorps and infantry up just yet because his MRT force is still quite prominent, right? And we got Bloodhounds being called in, or the uh, Steel Talons equivalent of them. They're going to almost fly over top of those Scorpion tanks. At the same time, Raider Jamming Missile did fire off from the Futurama side of the map. 
Uh, Hammerhead starting to cross the map also. And Shock Trepid, he grabbed this defensive tower early on, and now it's paying even bigger dividends, sniping some of these rocket squads, just causing some annoyance here for Futurama. Yeah, that hammerhead was very nice. I mean, he's just escaped to save the tower, and now this Titans makes him with MRT push. Like, I mean, he has a dose of blaze, so these scorpions are going to be quite nice to defend with. Sam Turkers as well, but I want to think that he's, he's got tech center now. So I want to say he's going to go stealth tanks, but he he's, his forces are getting thinned out from this push. So I think he needs to have an office job. Hmm. Orca in. Strike comes in. Pretty much a complete whiff. And yeah, will that obelisk drop come in to save Futurama? For the current moment, the Titan numbers are growing slowly one by one. Shock Trepid is sending them across the map. He now does have two hammerheads here on the front line. AP Ammo has finished up a little while ago. A couple of these scorpions going forward when they should have been retreating. There's the obelisk drop, but not a single shot. The perfect pullback here by Shock Trepid. Futurama finds no damage with that obelisk. But on the right side of the map, there might be some damage found by this flame tank as Futurama rolls a flame tank into the natural expansion of Shock Trepid. He will get one refinery for sure. That Titan is nearby to respond, but it's going to be the Hammerheads that actually go flame tank hunting. Yeah, I mean, the MCV was undeployed, right? So you couldn't even get it on the side of blockade. That was just quite unfortunate timing for Shock Trepid there. But I mean, one refinery yeah. on flame tank, it's not the end of a world because the field is, I mean, it's not like a brand new field. I mean, you can just rebuild it quickly. It will slow them down, but it's not the end of a world, right? No, I mean, he was going for that third base. Futurum will be there maybe a minute sooner, but ultimately, uh, one refinery this late in the game, you know, when Shock Trepid is already well established, it's certainly not the end of the world. Picking off a couple of Scorpion tanks, that's a nice bit of counterattack damage here. Futurama gets the kill with the uh, gets the kill on the refinery, but he's going to be losing some of these Scorps on the left side of the map. So, a bit of a trade. I mean, he's going to kill double harvester two harvesters for the blue nice. tower, and that is a lot of money, a lot of money. I mean, the Verticos, Oh my god, they're actually going to chase the anti-air gun, and they could actually finish the hammerhead. It is one HP. So, shot um, Futurama quite literally using it to the max right there. He will kill it. He's got yeah. two hammerheads. Wow. Free damage. Incredible. Meanwhile, on the south side of the map, one harvester gets eaten up as these railgun titans descend upon the main base of Futurama. That's a laser fence on the refinery, but it's now gone, and it's going to be the retreat, actually. So Futurama doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those avatars while he's got stealth tanks in his natural. Uh, excuse me, Shock Trepid doesn't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those avatars. Three stealth tanks from Futurama harassing the natural expansion of Shock Trepid. A little bit of chaos exploding around the map here as Futurama takes a pretty safe third base while doing some counter damage. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, right? With the, with the late nod game um, stealth tanks, steel talons. I mean, you've got no zone troopers as well, so you have to rely on like sensor pods or just like pit bulls with a mammoth tank or a titan in your field, right? To tech stealth. So it is a nightmare for steel talons to deal with, but he is going to pull it back and just hide there. But a pit might. No, a pit bull has been pulled. Actually, I think he lost it wow. actually from earlier. No, I can't see one actually. No, yeah. I think the stealth tank sniped the pit bull just before they tried to sneak into the corner. Uh, Rifleman does reveal oh. one of the stealth tanks, but he manages to escape. And Futurama has bought himself so much time. When this stealth tank attack started, Shock Trepid was on the other side of the map, putting pressure on the main base. And Shock Trepid's economy has been pretty much gutted. We started this game with a 3,000 credit advantage to Futurama. He was 3k up in total resources gathered. Now, that advantage has grown to 18,000 credits over the course of this game. The third base is paying huge dividends for Futurama. Yeah, I mean, what is it? Five or six K was due to those harvesters getting sniped from that blue Tiberium, right? And obviously, plus the stealth tanks to yeah. basically finish the eco off. Yeah, I mean, let's do a quick count here. One, two, three. He only has three harvesters left. Um, Sheesh. Shot Trooper has. Yeah, that, this is going to be a nightmare. I mean, and that's, he hasn't as huge. That's not even like three harvesters on a fully saturated field. That's three harvesters, and one of them is returning back <laughs> home with like 5% H, uh, 5% Tiberium inside of it. So it is not even like three full harvesters working away. It is He's barely scraping by here. 
I have one last attack. There's a ton of avatars, just so many avatars on the side of Futurama. So maybe Shock Trumpet will be able to pull something off here, but it's feeling like we're in the miracle zone for Shock Trumpet. I mean, rails are definitely scary. Oh, Virgo Bomber hit is going to kill. Oh, one time does get away. But I mean, yeah, as soon as his man spam comes in, I think he's going to call the quits. Because, I mean, All right. it, uh, it's just called Shockwave then, though. Yeah, Shockwave. The RNG isn't bad. It's not oh. great, though, as the GG comes in. And uh, that wasn't exactly a caster curse, but I do like that right as you were saying, ah, railguns are good, aircraft just come in and just destroy that. I'm glad someone else gets a little caster curse from here and from every now and again. It happens to me all the time live, don't worry, I'm used to it now. I've just I just face palm after it, it's all good. <laughs> good, good. Uh Shock Trepid versus Futurama game one, that economy graph. First five minutes, neck and neck. And then after that, Futurama just screams ahead, and that's where we see 500 avatars on one side versus like two mammoth tanks and four titans on the other side just not enough of everything from shock trepid in game number one but this is a best of seven so it's not over yet and we're gonna jump into game number two and game two takes us to twisted rift the blue tiberium in the middle of the map in the north sticking with nod Broadly, but specifically switching to Black Hand, this is Futurama. And then the bottom right, also with the same what you said, but switching to the main faction, we have Orange GDI Shock Trepid. We can see all the way inside of his MCV. I was just doing that weirdly. <laughs> she said that. The super zoom on the map. I don't know who decided that on some of these custom community maps that you would be able to zoom in extra far, but you know, I'm fine with it. Can you take a wild guess who it was? Uh, CGF. No, Mass Mass Relief. Relief. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just, <laughs> this is, is Master Leaf like pro zoom or something? I'm not aware of this as like a, as like a thing. Oh, okay. Is Master Leaf always talking about zoom levels? I don't, I don't actually know. I just remember one time he just increased the zoom because he was chesting something and then he kept it on this map. That's all oh, I know. And then he just left it? I, yeah, huh. that's all I know, really. Well, did he know that there was going to be an operations center immediately and the first flame tank would be rushing out onto the map? Now, every time we see this, when it's black hand, when you go for a bit of a flamed rush, there's a million teeny tiny variants. This is going to be a double flame tank rush. He's keeping the operations. No, okay. There's the sell off. He didn't get a Reckoner, so it's no Reckoner follow up. It's just two flame tanks. That is the particular variant that we're going to be seeing from Futurama. It's also a very interesting one as well because he didn't go for a harvester first. He went straight for bites. Normally, yeah. sometimes you go harvester, flame, then bites, but he has got a ridiculous opening. It looks like an all in, but it's not. So if, I want to see what he gets done with this. Four bikes out in the middle of the map. He does have that black hand squad as well. First pit bull gets sniped. Second pit bull can get ganged up on and it will get eliminated one shot pretty much from these bikes. Watchtower is here. MCV is exposed in the north. Double power plant dropped from Shock Trepid in the north. And there's going to be the first flame tank on the MCV. The second flame tank on the War Factory. And the Black Hand Squad on the Tib Spike. It's not lights out, but it is getting dark here for Shock Trepid. Game one goes to Futurama. And game two is a fantastic opening for Future as well. That flame tank is doing so much damage. It will be finished off. The MCV will be saved. But I mean, at what cost? So low. Tib Spike goes oh. down. War Factory goes down. Both power plants go down. The only thing keeping Shock Trepid in this game is his double refinery. He managed to keep that alive. I mean, that's very that's a very well done move there. I mean, I like how it's actually very risky as well to go for an MCV or flame tank. Um, I mean, he needs like a Ooh. few more seconds of DPS, right? He goes crane. Shock Trumpet dropped a got? crane. 
more than three he grand. He's banking a lot of money right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, to be fair, that's pretty good. To be fair, doing that. I mean, he, I mean, he's well. in a wool factory. You can't put, you can't produce the money, right? So, uh, the units, right? Yeah. So it's actually kind of a high Q. Yeah. Interesting. Black Hand Squad. Is he actually going to be able to get the kill on the crane? Uh, MCV he... deploys. He's going for the crane. I'm not sure that he'll get it, but Watchtower might barely be able to save it. Oh, that crane drops so nah. <laughs> low in health so quickly. Bye bye. I mean, he could get a pit. He gets a pit bull as well. Wow, black guns. <laughs> he gets elite. The elite black gun squad. It's gonna melt the Watchtower. I can probably melt the um the power plant as well. He needs to get harvested to crush it. Uh, APC is going to be his choice. Watchtower on the other side of the MCV as well. Uh, we do have a couple of Rifleman squad on the north side. Unfortunately for Shock Trepid, he doesn't have much ability to extend force to the other side of the map and do any real damage. But Shock Trepid now has third refinery up north. Got the refinery or got the war factory back up and running as well. And all things considered, Futurama had a fantastic opening, but he is 13,000 credits down in total resources gathered. So that is where Shock Trepid's economy has been working 24 seven, never taking a break, never resting. He's got almost the entirety of his first field harvested and he's already working heavily on his second. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a healthy balance. So he didn't actually spend too much money to defend, right? He recovered pretty well after that attack. So I feel like what he's doing now with double wolf actually pred and he's going orca. I thought he got hammered actually. Orcas, okay. Um, obviously, Black Can don't have stealth harvesters, so he doesn't have to worry about having to micro the orcas to the additional extent with using the, um, the ability to scan, nor using a radar right. scan either. So, mm. Yeah, saves himself there. But if you think about it, that first flame tank that hit the MCV in the north, really, that delayed... I mean, it did get two power plants, which is a little bit of value. But it delayed the expansion, and then it forced him to drop a barracks and, you know, get the engineer. That that flame tank was on the edge of winning the game, but because it didn't win the game, it actually didn't do that much when you consider the cost of rushing a flame tank like that. And then the total result is like, oh, he, he has to heal up his MCV. It's nice, but it's like on the edge of winning the game, and instead it just kind of doesn't do very much. Yeah, I mean, it's also he went for the flame tap before, before a half, right? So it was an extra aggressive attack. So right. if that it didn't actually work, but he hasn't got the eco, um, that it's just a fluctuate, it's, it's better. But look at the orcas. Yeah. Oh, I get harvested. Oh, he doesn't split his orcas though. Oh! <laughs> And he doesn't get that last orc, uh, that last harvester, oh. so he trades all four orcas, and he gets two harvesters, but not the third. That's the victory I think Future Armor needed right there to solidify himself more in this game. I feel. Orcas are being rebuilt, so Shock Trumpet he's had the economic advantage for pretty much the entirety of this game, but he hasn't had the production facilities to actually make use of that. Losing those Orcas is a nice reset for Futurama, and Futurama has said, I'm Black Hand, but I can still bike buggy with the best of them. I may not have stealth, I may not have aircraft, but I can bike buggy till the end of time. And we'll see. This is going to be a tidal wave, potentially, of bike buggy crossing the map and crashing into Shock Trepid. <sighs> I mean, yeah, a shock trapper. I mean, he's got a hammerhead now just to scout. Hopefully he's not. He actually is investing in hammerhead spam now. But I just don't agree with getting hammerheads because Bad Buggy is just a perfect anti-air countability, right? Obviously, he's going to get attack as well soon. So, typical gets online. It's going to be lights out for these hammerheads. So, I mean, Predator BC also is, is really slow to chase his Bad Buggy around. So, I want to... And he's getting great map control. Let me just quickly change to his vision right now. Um, future armor. So, you can see the entirety of the bottom. The top is still blind, though. But yeah, he's got That's free reign of the bottom side of the map. Hmm. Maybe he swings in here and does a little bit more damage to the main, but the, the main is mostly empty at this point. Yeah, but he's also going for that Marv as well. He's going to go for this Marv, harvest um, the third of future armors. But I think future armor, despite that, he might get EMP coils and he might actually mm. push the top, not the bottom as well instead. 
Upgrade starts for Futurama. He also went Secret Shrine, so he's going to be getting those Black Disciples. All things considered, you know, 840 for the Secret Shrine. That's kind of a late Secret Shrine for a Black Hand player, but given how Futurama has played the rest of this game, it really does make sense that his Secret Shrine, his Black Disciples, potentially Purifying Flame, we can hope and dream, uh, that, it, that it would be delayed. It makes sense for this game, but it is a late Secret Shrine from a Black Hand player. Yeah, I mean, he just also got Black Disciples, who didn't go for um, yeah. the Blue Flame. Which obviously is hope... a, hef a hefty price, isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense most of the time, but I still always hope that players do get it. It's fun to watch as an observer, <laughs> as someone who doesn't have to manage the economy of these players. I think it's fun. You like seeing a blue flame type just go in your base and completely eradicate oh, the yeah. base, yeah? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. It's it's just <laughs> melting buildings in an instant. Uh, by the way, Marv did finish production, so that epic unit is there on the south side of the map. And this bike buggy, it never found an angle. It never actually engaged. So it is going to be a combo man-spam bike buggy army with an MCV move. Obelisk drop right there on the front line. Orca Strike comes in, but it's going to be a big whiff. And Redeemer Engineering Facility gets dropped here at the front line. So it's going to be a minute or two before that Redeemer actually comes online. But we do have a bit of a ticking clock for both of these players. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Shot Trooper is harvesting this field now. Um, Futurama's only got a tiny bit of Tib left in his bottom left field. The blue field, though, that is one hefty field. I haven't seen a blue field wow. in these sort of pro games not harvested all game. And second obelisk drop comes in. Hammerhead's going to be rushing forward. A lot of infantry here, but the hammers are out of range for now. Preds kind of getting caught up on each other. They're going to be annihilated one by one. The obelisk gets sniped and it's triple watchtower on the front line. If only that was enough to protect these harves because one of them goes down and Shock Trumpet will hold the front line here. But a little bit of losses on both sides. Not major losses for either player, but just some minor damage in both directions. I mean, he's got Juggernauts now. I mean, if he had the Marv up top, would this be the most prominent sort of GDI force? Like, Marv Jug is ridiculously hard to fight on a Tidford especially, but the Marv's actually just being used as a massive harvester. It is going to deny future armor, but he's kept this bite buggy alive, and I think he might actually get a big open if he goes to the bottom right, because he actually is harvesting his main again. Three harvesters full of Tiberium is quite a nice um, oh, wow. pick if he gets that. Blue Tiberium has been spotted, right as you uh, pointed that out. Someone sent a couple of harvesters down. I'm guessing Shock Trepid to grab some of it. And I thought Futurama was doing the same thing, but he's actually sending his harvesters to the front line. Double Obelisk drop here to snipe those jugs. Hammerhead's showing up, but they're a moment too late to save the jug. It's, it's going to be Shockwave Artillery. It lands perfectly there on that Redeemer. Rage Gen fires off, and it's going to be costing at least one of these harvesters a lot of its health bar. Bike Buggy rolls up just in time. Rockets as well in the front line gets set upon. Shock Trepid has a lot of damage to deal with here as this Redeemer marches his way to the south and tries to find a better angle. Orbital Bombardment will be the last ditch effort here as Shock Trepid hopes to hold this on and keep his Mammoth Tank alive, but it's just too much firepower. And he's thinned out the herd considerably, but can he actually push Futurama all the way back? Back. I mean, Future Ammo, meanwhile, though, has EMP codes. He has EMP the Marv. They've only got one Zoma Trooper in it. Um, he will lock it down. So after this goes down, Shot Trooper will have hardly any economy going on for the um, fields that aren't empty. So I think this is what Future Ammo needs to get this in this game. Redeemer still lives. It will die there, I think. He actually probably could turn around and flame down that zone really, because it is actually taking um, Realm of Damage right now. Manspam's still doing absolute work, and I think, yeah, he's got a base here, so I think Futurama will take this game now. But uh, I don't want to call it too soon, but I don't see how Shotshubit lives. Marv gets sniped, but so does the Redeemer, and the defense is extremely thin for Shock Trepid. Another Harvester is going to be sniped. This bike buggy with the Tib Core upgrade, with the EMP coil upgrade, has been doing massive damage for Futurama. The Obelisk drop in the middle of Shock Trepid's base just feels like it is too much 
for him to deal with. Another Juggernaut goes down, and it looks like Futurama is here to stay. It might just be Watchtowers versus Shredder turrets, <laughs> but I think eventually this bike buggy will come back in and start peppering damage against the GDI player. GG gets called, and Shock Trepid will take two game losses in a row. Damn, I mean, just straight away, looking at a unit stab went all the way up and all the way down. That's what happens when you have, when you have man spam as a uh, nod faction, right? Just let you see unit fluctuation just goes up and down so much. But yeah, that was. Look at the eco difference. Oh my god. Insane. Shock Trepid, he had that slow start in terms of production, but yeah, his economy was always looking good. And I mean, even when he was just marvesting, he still managed to stay ahead of Futurama. And in the end, uh, I think he probably just couldn't spend all of his money quite efficiently enough. And that will send us into game number three. Futurama is looking dominant. And that takes us to Sick City for game number three. Futurama on the cusp of going to that match point, but he still has to take down this red Traveler 59 in the north. He needs your cheers. This is Shock Trepid. And the bottom right, once again, keeping his Scion card notoriously, it is Futurama as GDI. Switches it up. Two games in a row as Nod Factions. And then he pivots. I mean, he's very proud of every single faction, right? So it's always good to see people changing factions and they can actually play it best ability, right? He is quite good and it is nice to see him switch it up. Now, Shock Trumpet also, you know, switches it up. Goes for Traveler 59. How do you feel about Traveler 59 on a nice small map like this? As a map like this as well, where it's quite closed off, I think it's very hard for them to, uh, I think, create an opening because there's so many garrisons in the middle. I mean, yeah, especially as well, if you go for a descent rush, going around the sides of the bridges, it become very late. I think GDI can base push quite easily against Traveller. Um, not mm -hmm. having any shields as well, I think... It's definitely... It's, it's always hit and miss, Traveller. I think GDI on some maps are like a of a Tiberian field you actually have to fight for like Highlands, I go GDR all the time. But because you only have two fields, the size of it, Traveller can just wormhole in all the time, Grove Accelerator as well, they can just camp if they need to as well. Mm. Definitely an option. Yeah, when you were saying base push, I was like, I feel like this, this game often does, this map does often turn into those base push scenarios because your natural expansions are so incredibly close to each other and they just get more and more claustrophobic as the game goes on so i feel like very quickly juggernauts get into range of your opponent you know you're building juggernauts at your natural expansion and they're basically already in range of your opponent's natural expansion but futurama and shock trepid both appear to have uh chosen these factions deliberately for this map so they must have some kind of confidence saying that though um the distance between Shock Trepid's main and Future Trumpet expansion, you can actually do a quite a good seeker push if you wanted to. Now, I thought mm. he was going to do it, I was building Gunwalkers, but I think he's a just for scouts. He's going to go eco, which is interesting as a travel player. I thought he wanted to go for some sort of mid game play of descent, but he's actually playing very casual right now, like a Skrin, but he's also but he's Traveler. Skrin, but of course, uh, you know, no stasis, no <laughs> ultimate stasis shield to be able to lock those units down. So. Hopefully he's uh, he's got some kind of a plan. Shock Trepid dropping down 0-2 in the map score as well. He's got some ground to make up in a best of seven. But Shock Trepid and Futurama, they're, you know, relatively close in the skill. I feel like I see Futurama perform a little bit better, especially in, uh, you know, tournament events. But Shock Trepid, he's always there sort of neck and neck. Maybe not quite getting as good of results, maybe not winning out overall, but... He's still there on the top. Yeah, I've definitely seen Futurama win against Shutter and more, but both obviously are quite high, like high value players. Um, I'm trying to think actually if he won in the mirror tournament I hosted, but I think he actually had to Futurama had to leave after a game, so 
Mm. Obviously, shot went through to the finals in the end, but um, you know, I think Futurama, I think, has that edge, but still, obviously, both pretty good players. Wow, Ravagers. I mean, we got the Stasis Chamber, we got the Fast Legs upgrade from Shock Trumpet, but he actually goes Ravagers. He's not going Cultists, he's not going Descents, at least not right away. I mean, I'm sure he will get those things later, but he goes two Ravagers right out of the gate. Now, this is one of those things that Ravagers have changed quite a bit from their original vanilla versions, their 1.02 versions. And he goes Storm Riders as well. I think this Storm is, oh, I was gonna say, it's just a scout, but I mean, actually, he can, it, it, it's quite a good idea to go for Storms because he can hide in that ridgeway and you can basically escape any vehicles chasing it, right? I guess that's the plan. We'll see if he's able to actually snipe any of these harvesters. Hammerhead is here. Blue Tiberium being stolen in the top right side while these gunwalkers and these watchtowers engage with each other in the middle of the map. Pred APC trying to sneak its way along the south side of the map. These guys all kind of splitting up their attention into different areas. Yeah, we're seeing like a very technical traveler player right now. I actually thought the Ravagers would get sniped in the top right, but it, Hammerhead does pull away. Just done it before. That's quite lucky of him, but Coltis is gonna get captured on APC. Does go Oh, does get a mind drop though. Does get depleted though. Shot after. Oh man. And the mind drop. Oh, area mind control comes in, grabs three of the APCs, and they're gonna be trying to target down one of these predator tanks. He's gonna try and do as much damage as he can. It's kind of funny because the mines were dropped by the red player, they count as red mines, even though they were GDI. They do not transfer back over when the when the mind control evaporates storm riders come in to kill off a couple of hammerheads they're starting to get targeted down ravagers just got to put destroyed in the main didn't actually get harvest line he's got ap ammo now right uh, so his tower is going to be so hard for him to make it um to basically find a way in right i think the only way you can find an entrance now is from that top bridge because there's watchtowers guard in the front Obviously, the bridge at the bottom left has been scouted quite a lot, so I think his only way of making them work is going to top right. This one harvester from <laughs> Futurama, it auto-harvested from his main base. It auto-targeted his opponent's natural expansion. That's just one of those things that kind of highlights... Oh, actually, the same thing happened to Shock Trepid. His harvester did manage to escape, though. But that's one of those things that just highlights how this map is different from a lot of other maps. By the way, Eradicator Hexpod spawned out on to the map now. Tier 3 is up and running, I assume, for both players. Yep, Marv is about three quarters of the way done. Late game is upon us. Yeah, I mean, I think the Traveler... I mean, this build as well is so big, it actually can sustain three ref. Um, yeah. No one actually wants to do it yet. There's Gunwalkers are scouting. I think we're going to see a wormhole soon i want to say um i mean if he can deny the mob that's extra good right but i think it's almost coming out so maybe to deny rails but he isn't even researching it so i don't know what he'd go for a well actually but yeah i guess it's a little bit too late snipes a firehawk though those gunwalkers getting some value firehawks trying to clear out the storm riders they've been on a storm rider killing mission for a long time and these storm riders just continue to assert their air dominance over Futurama. A harvester from Shock Trepid will go down, and there's the wormhole. You called it, but it's going to be in the main base of Futurama. There's a decent number of juggernauts here to be able to put those shots down, and a harvester will get sniped, it seems. Tripod's trying to split up the defending GDI army, trying to draw him in two different directions. The Marv will chase down these tripods, and if he could get the husks, that would be a nice addition for Futurama, but this is definitely throwing a wrench into the works here for Futurama. He did not want to have to deal with this. Oh, and yeah, he blinks him away. Put, yeah, I was just going to say, I think he was trying to go for the spike, but the Marv actually kept chasing it, but Ob's Podogy is very good for teleporting you. That's the two trouble does get saved. That Hexpod also had um, the Sin segment as well, so it was just melting harvesters, but because he can't teleport away, Ooh. he always oh, the fade. I was just yeah, going to say. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. 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 Don't Screen get excited. Right. <laughs> calm, calm down. There's nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. Although, Screen. something we don't see very often: EMP grenadiers. I do believe the the EMP grenade, like throw speed or travel time or whatever, has been sped up. 
One of the reasons why people don't like EMP Grenadiers, despite the fact that they uh, the EMP Grenade is quite good, is that that arc and that travel time makes them so difficult to actually use properly. And I believe that was one of the changes in R20. Yes, the it was. I believe the animation was reduced by fifty percent, so it is basically okay. quite quicker, right? Twice as quick. Yeah, um, it makes it them a lot more responsive. Ten EMP. Yeah, and if, if, if I mean honestly, one EMP, it one grenade squad obviously is all right. They do have a lot of them, and you have good mic drops, so these few players do. You can just get them to EMP one by one, like in the line formation. You can take every unit down. Obviously, he's traveling. He has no shields as well, right? So it's even better for him to use them. Yeah. Futurama adding sniper teams. So he gets the armory, he gets grenadiers, he gets snipers, he gets EMP grenades. He's kind of powered up a, a somewhat unorthodox, oh, tech, the double wormhole. And this is actually going to be a signal transmitter as well. And a mothership call in Guaspari. You are being honored here tonight <laughs> with this mothership <laughs> call in. Are you kidding me? Oh, Daddy's home, he just said right there, Mothership time. He knew I was casting the replay, it seemed. He wants to go for this. It's all for Gaspari. Oh, he does get a oh. force fire off, connects. Oh, the base goes down. He gets everything. Gaspari oh. gets to witness what we normally see him do. And there is one little patch of base remaining for Futurama. This Marv holding out, holding up the entirety of the GDI army, but that's the GG. And that is the first win and maximum style points for Shock Trepid. He puts a point on the board and what a fantastic way to put a point on the board. And game four will take us to Pipeline Problems. An absolute classic of a map, and one that a Tib Wars player is going to be very comfortable on. But it is actually the choice of the other player, because in the north, plain as the yellow, plain nod, this is Shock Trepid. And in the south, once again, of course, sticking with Cyan. This is a Futurama as a screen. Shock Trepid playing a ton of Tib Wars over the course of his Command and Conquer career, if you can call it that. Uh, super familiar with Pipeline Problems. One of the most common maps over there. Now, of course, Kane's Wrath. The economy works a bit different. Things are a little bit uh, changed, but... This is going to be one of those maps he is super familiar with, and that's why I'm kind of fascinated that for Futurama's first map pick, because by the way, if you guys didn't know, the format of this show match is I chose the starting map, Tiki Turmoil, and then it's loser's pick after that, and I did not place any restrictions on their map choices, so I guess technically we could have Tournament Galaxy at some point, but uh, hopefully we won't. Uh, yeah, there's no map choice restrictions, so Futurama chooses pipeline problems. Yeah, obviously, um, Futurama really likes this map, but then again, it's quite uh, interesting how he chose to pick this, because obviously he knows Shot Trip is a Tibbles player, right? And obviously, classic EA maps he's very familiar on, so it goes to show that he's basically saying, oh yeah, I know you, you know, like this map, I'm not afraid of you, so... Shows the uh, alpha in Futurama right there, still picking it regardless. But they also both choose their factions. Shock Trepid switching over to just Vanilla Nod. You know, he was playing some GDI factions, then he plays Traveler 59, and now he's Vanilla Nod, which maybe lines up with his Tib Wars experience. But then Futurama goes Vanilla Scrim. So we'll have to see is this going to be a stasis chamber, a stasis shield? kind of a play where he's going for some critical one clicks and he's looking to shut down that nod tech or maybe he just has something else in plan and he's got something else in his mind yeah i mean he's definitely definitely is going for standard eco now going i mean i think he i can't see him properly shutting down shock early um, just because of how spaced out the map is right i mean obviously you can go to sit's early gun and try and pick up the crane but you won't be crane himself so the timing of units coming out doesn't really fit it, but he's just going to be taking some damage to this MCV, nothing really too going on, but I want to say he's going to go for a big tripod spam with Devastator Warships. However, mm -hmm. I can't tell what Shock will go for. 
Yeah, that'd definitely be a classic kind of pipeline problems unit comp. Couple of seeker tanks here from Futurama, going for the scout, going for the light harass as well. Not gonna necessarily do too much damage, but maybe these descents heading through the middle of the map will find a bit more of an angle to pick off a couple of power plants or find a couple of stray units. Futurama is getting ready on that third base, but Shock Trepid is already there in the North War Factory and Tier 3 all set up. I mean, the Seeker tanks as well, yeah, they already sort of prompted the shadow turrets, so yeah. they actually could have gone straight for the crane, but they actually chose to take a dive at the refinery, just lost them all for nothing, so it's a bit of a shame mm -hmm. we couldn't um, sort the macro down or shot trap it. But what is Futurama doing now? He's, okay, Texan is out now. I want to say, I mean, he is going to be in danger if he scorts, but he hasn't got dozers, so the descents are still quite dangerous to run into, but I think actually, me just saying that, dozers almost upgraded. Classic. No, he's actually getting the quad turret upgrade. Oh, <laughs> he's is going... it? No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I was saying, wouldn't it be funny? You see the upgrade like 90% done, and you assume it's dozers because, of course, it's dozers. But then for some <laughs> reason, he goes quad turrets like a goofball. Yeah, back to your point a minute ago. Uh, I do every once in a while, we see some players go for some kind of like really aggressive build on this map. They're basically, they're trying to adv take advantage of the fact that everyone goes for the blue Tiberium and they're trying to punch through, but we'll see if these Scorps can punch through. There is going to be an EMP online in a couple of minutes here for Futurama as these Scorps dive on and kill that tripod. They're going to be able to surround and around this storm column and they will actually stay for the duration. These Scorps are are not backing down. Now the tripod pops on out. The uh, force fields are done for the low tier units, but not for the higher tier units. Second tripod marches his way onto the front line and laser capacitors finish up just in time. Goodbye to this force. They are going to escape out the side of the map in this lone engineer from Futurama looking for the husk that has already been destroyed. I can't tell if that was worth a shot, to be honest, because, I mean, he did lose a tripod and a storm column, but how many tanks went down there? Good, like, seven or eight, right? I guess if he's just counting those uh, those tanks as gone because he wants to transition into avatars. Oh, one click. Gets the refinery. Damn. I mean, he has got Tiberium still left in his main, so it's not too critical, but... Oh, uh, look at that. Straight away, puts it down. Yeah, he had, that, he had that extra one queued as well. He was about to go two refs. But yeah, it's it's always a bit of a dance, the calculus of whether an attack was worth it. I think in this case, Shock Trepid, he wanted the vision. He wanted to see what Futurama had going on. He gets the storm column. He gets a couple of tripods as well. And then he's like, you know, that's, that's fairly fine. I'm transitioning into avatars. Ooh, flame tank in the bottom left. Kills off that blue Tiberium refinery. Obviously, there's not much there, but it will slow down the harvesting of that blue Tiberium over the rest of this game, which is always nice. And Futurama repositioning his MCV. Is he ready to go for the end game? The Redeemer just stepped out onto the map. I mean, he has got an EMP ready, so if he times his attack well, this could be quite prominent. There's also an Engineer. I wonder if he's going to actually try and capture the expansion point for some extra build radius for a Storm Column. Um, mm. or even just a portal to put engineers down, but I feel like he, he's a hex pod, right? I feel like just fighting a not epic about an epic is just, you have to rely on a stasis. Ooh. Black Hand Squad on the left will survive with one unit remaining in the squad. The EMP uh, control center will be saved by Futurama. His gunwalkers make their way over, and the tripods will make their way to the high ground in the bottom side of the map. Stop this bike scorp combo from killing off that tib spike futurama almost uh having a bit of trouble and there's the stasis gonna lock down the avatars and the redeemer on the front line but it doesn't stop the specter from continuing to rain down fire on this mcv futurama is gonna rush forward his hope is to get the close is to close the distance on this redeemer and lock it down it looks like just enough has survived 
say stasis is still active gunwalkers rushing in going for the crush they will find it there's the emp locks down the redeemer hoping to lock down those avatars as well descent pouring in there's two portals and there's the emp as the follow-up to keep no it didn't it didn't relock down the redeemer the redeemer comes back online the rage gen does fire off but will it even matter because these tripods have already been targeted and shock trevor rushes forward everything in his arsenal firing upon the screen player the tripods take down the redeemer and now they just have to deal with these rockets but it's so much damage from both sides futurama's mcb continuing to be shelled his tripods are standing strong against the avatars he's trying to keep his front line moving forward but the vertigos are here to try and change the tide of this battle two more tripods get sniped and futurama's front line seems to be falling apart there's a flame tag as well, the back of the base. It's heroic. It's oh. killed the entirety of the main. Yeah, and there we that go. That flame tank with the follow-up. Yeah, I mean, he, I, I just didn't see I was going to win that game of our epic unit, right? I mean, the Stasis was nice, but I can't believe that EMP didn't actually re-EMP the um, Redeemer. Funny enough. And that will even up the score. Shock Trap it doesn't believe in dying quietly so he will send us into game number five with an even score and game five potentially the momentum shifter will be on decrepit arena we've got classic tournament arena so green and beautiful and then it's just turned into a post-apocalyptic hellscape for decrepit arena but plane is the cyan in the north up 2-0 and then dropped two games in a row. This is Futurama. And the bottom right as the Red Reaper 17 going to synth. This is Shock Trapper. Hmm. Not often do you see the Reaper 17 descent rush, but we're going to see it here today. I thought it would have gone for the... Uh, you can use it to go and... Uh, go harass a blue because they might go crane or emissary because they're full good uh full grown blue field but he's actually gonna go for the spike still it's gonna pay for it so i reckon all right so the descents will be able to clean up that spike and yeah as you referenced some players on this map or even on uh tournament arena like to go for that early blue but in this case it's not it is actually going to be right into an operations center here for Futurama. His MCV will move shortly after that, but the tip spike is down and this buzzer is going to scout this perfectly. So this flame tank gets spotted essentially as it comes out of, no, it's getting caught on the harvester. Oh, that's just annoying. That's an extra sort of one or two seconds right there. Yeah. Right, there. Not too, not too bad, but still quite annoying nonetheless because it's going to give him more time for a seeker to come out and start putting some damage on that. I want to see it. Should you get a keyboard descent to put us back as well? Obviously, you've got to be careful because the napalm will <laughs> eradicate the, um, them straight away. But if they get some shots off, it will drastically melt that flame tank, right? All right, two flame tanks right down the middle. Actually, one of them is reverse. Okay, they're splitting now. They were going directly down the middle and the secret tanks were there to push them away. But in this case, the flame tanks are trying to split off the one in the north may be able to go a bit undetected at the current moment. And we'll see if these descents are actually able to uh, do anything. Flame tanks spreading out around the map. Shock Trepid is feeling the heat. Flame tank close to the MCV. Is he going to force the lift off? No, MCV nah, just stays it, it, there it? for the current yeah. moment. Power plant will go down. Tank, right? Oh, we get a shot. Oh, okay, let's get a save. Okay, there we go. Let, um, let's see, he could die, but he does actually have to pin it up. Ooh, and this. Not even Garrison, the back gun squad either. It's going to die, Sharpwalker. Oh, Ooh. no. The flame tank is here to finish off that tip spike, but yeah, that black hand squad just goes down to a Shardwalker. And Blue Tiberium has been established for Futurama. Shock Trap it a little bit slower on that Blue Tiberium uptake. And. Secret tanks, they're starting to push this expansion in the south. At the same time, the descents are going to snipe that upgraded power plant. So that's low power mode here for Futurama. 
Shock Treppin also going into low power mode briefly there. And it will be one Scorpion tank getting ganged up on before the Harvesters get targeted. Futurama's Blue Tiberium Harvesters so full of promise and hoping to keep him in this game. They will be set upon. Meanwhile, a Flame Tank in the north deletes those descents. And the second Harvester, the GG, gets called. And that's it. Nod versus Trav. And it's down to the Flame Tanks that do nothing. I did not expect him to die that quickly. I think he really underestimated the counterattack, right? Those Seeker tanks. Um, the descents in the north, and then the Seekers in the south. That was just too much pressure for Futurama to deal with. And that will send us into game number six for the first time. Shock Trepid is leading the map score. And game number six takes us to Small Town USA for match point in this best of seven. For the first time, leading the point score in the north. Once again, choosing Steel Talons. This is Shock Trepid. And once again, keeping the color cyan. This as the as a black hand. This is Futurama. Futurama switching it up to black hand once again. I always hope to see Purifying Flame. As I said, I understand why players don't do it, but, you know, as, as an observer, as a watcher, I, I like when players do good. And that's one thing where, like, Master Leaf is more willing to get Purifying Flame than most other players, because Master Leaf is more willing to do goofy things, and then eventually it does work, and you get to see that awesome game where Purifying Flame is actually a good value. I mean, all you gotta do, Cyber, is cast a 4v4 with a black hand in it, and you'll guarantee some blue theme action, I will say that. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> Those big team 100%. games, you always get all of the weird <laughs> upgrades that no one else gets. 100%. Even, yeah, I'm, I'm guarantee as well, you probably see the Venom upgrade, where, like, the, I forget what it's called, the signature one, where it displays, like, 100 Venoms, oh, where it's yeah. one Venom. <laughs> probably does get upgraded at one point. Which is such a funny upgrade to even have in the game. That's such like yeah. a real world kind of a... They have these things in the game that sort of emulate real world tactics. And they're like, in real world warfare, it's very much to your advantage if you can confuse your enemy and make them think that there's a bunch of Venoms there. But like, it's so easy to see a big glob of Venoms on the minimap and then just be like, oh no, that's one Venom. It's not actually <laughs> useful in the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yet to actually get that upgrade and like force a GDI to use like a supersonic airstrike or like an EMP or something <laughs> like that. Because if that happens, I'll be forever grateful that a final minute work. But yeah, I don't think it's ever going to work really. Now we're on the map Small Town USA. This is one of those maps where you have two expansion fields and they are equidistant from both players. There is no natural path to where you should go. And in this case, we have a Steel Talons player and a Black Hand player potentially vying over the same field. It does seem like Futurama is aware of Shock Trepid's position here. And so Shock Trepid was first to the field in the bottom right hand side and Futurama will be respecting that. Futurama, he gets the Secret Shrine, he gets the Operation Center, and he's actually keeping his War Factory powered down for the current moment. I'm guessing he's gonna upgrade a couple of power plants and then bring that back online. But as all of that is happening, Shock Trepid already has his first refinery deployed at his natural expansion. Yeah, so Shock Tr 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 is doing, um, I wouldn't say a standard build in this map, actually going for the expansion quite fast as steel talons, whereas Futurama is doing what he normally does and goes with one base strategy. Going for man spam, he's got some bite buggy here, a flame tank now come as well, so he's using basically all the black can arsenal. Ooh. An airfield does come down as well, so if he scouts this, we'll be surprised if some mantis do come out as well. But this flame tank is heading towards the base, and he sees a titan there, he's still heading towards it, so interesting he's still taking this fight. Yeah, not a lot of times do you see a flame tank win a 1v1 with a titan. <laughs> But maybe this will be the one time. And he, of course, you know what would make this flame tank even better? His purifying flame. He would kill that watchtower <laughs> even faster. Uh, it might, yep. might win a 1v1, to be honest, if it blew flying for as well. <laughs> Imagine if it did. That would be pretty amazing. And yeah, what a surprise. A Titan wins a 1v1 with a flame tank. <laughs> Who would have believed it? 
The man spam that you mentioned is making its way through the middle of the map. There is a Titan. There's no Wolverines here. A couple of pit bulls on the north side and MRT. These rockets could actually jump inside of these buildings and uh, there is not a lot of Wolverines or any anti infantry to really deal with those. Okay, he went hammerheads. So it's going to be hammerheads to deal with the infantry. But now they're garrisoned up inside of buildings. Yeah, I mean, this this, this garrison right by the field is actually taking two shots to the harvesters. Um, lucky there's still a wolf actually there, so you can get the pairs, but there's an MCV pushing towards the bottom, and it is two MCVs, and I see, I see as a turret queued, I'm a it's an obelisk right now, and it is an obelisk. Immediately snipes that Titan. Couple of Mantis is going to be coming in. Two Mantises, one from each side, descend upon these hammerheads and smash them down. Straight to tier three on one refinery at the natural expansion. And at the same time, there is no easy way to deal with these garrisonable structures back at home. It looks like Shock Trepid has skipped out on those grenadiers. And instead, he's got a couple of Wolverines and a couple of Titans. And he is trying to hold off both sides at the same time. Uh, he has not dislodged this MCV one bit. Yeah, he's finally built over here. He actually was stolen his money for ages right there. It's finally going to clear the garrison, but he's already actually, he's actually already ungarrisoned either. Another obelisk gets placed down, which is going to melt these towers. Harvester's red health is going to get prompted oh. again. Another one comes as well. If this gets targeted again, he's going to lose. Like, he's only got one harvester left after this goes down. No Ooh. way, right? Ooh. The follow-up oh flame tank in the north as well. The GG comes out, and Shock Trepid has been defeated. Futurama says it's time to go to the ace match. It is time to even up the score and send us to game number seven in this best of seven. Game seven will take us to an absolute classic tournament highlands to finish out this series, sponsored by... Yashimars Yashimasaren <laughs> by the dog Yoshi. The first dog sponsored show match and it goes to game seven. It goes to the ace match. But here on the left side of Tournament Highlands, plain black hand. Give it up for the Cyan. Give it up for Futurama. And on the right hand side as the base blue GDI right now, we have Shock Trapet. Double blue colors and it's a GDI versus Black Hand. A classic matchup on this map. What a great way to finish out this series, which has been quite neck and neck between these players. It looked out looking, seeming like Futurama was going to dominate, but Shock Trepid brought it back three games in a row. And now Futurama has taken us to the ace match, choosing Black Hand two games in a row. And this is actually some pretty serious GDI anti-scouting. He really wants to make sure that the Cabal squads are not able to dominate him. Yeah, interesting, I should go to say, because um, sometimes it's actually better off to go Pitbull early to see if he's going for a Flame Rush, but the mm -hmm. fact he's built this many, um, this many Rifleman squares, actually able to fight the Cabals, but now he's drafted a few more, he can't really take those trades because he will lose all his scouts for it. So he's going to try and play the safe garrison, I think he's going to retreat back to one, right? Yeah. And of all the Flame Rushes in the world, this is quite a thin one. One flame tank sells off the operation center immediately. It will be spotted by the pit bull in the middle of the map, but this pit bull has also taken 50% damage from the cabal squad that was scouting down there. But at the very least, Shock Trumpet knows the position of that flame tank. If he saw the, cabal, the black hand squad, then he also knows that it's only one flame tank. But expansions are coming up. And this is a fiery way to start off a game number seven. We'll see how good the defense is from Shock. I was just going to say, Futurama's doing the exact same build as the Tib Rift game. He's just doing it on one Harvester as well. But only one flame tank, not two. So MCV this, is going to take work. a bit of damage. And I'm not too worried about the MCV, to be quite honest. But uh, the bikes are trading against the pit bulls. The APC is still alive. This flame tank is getting more damage against that MCV than I would have thought. 
Barracks does get deployed, and the MCV does not pack up until the last possible second. Really? No, the MCV gets sniped! The Engineer gets killed as well! Futurama finally doing massive damage here in game number seven. The Flame Tank comes through and buys huge space for Futurama. Damn, I mean, keeping those bites out was key, right? He was waiting for that undeploy anim uh, deploy animation and then gets, like, I think two volleys, that was it, and then just completely eradicates the MCV. I think if he focused down those bikes, he wouldn't have that problem, but the flame tank obviously snuck around the side, obviously keeping um, him focused on that. But that was a really good play for Drama, but he only went um, this on one harvester, so it's, it's yeah. not totally over, I'd say. Shock Trumpet is up 8,000 credits in total resources gathered. He has to spend production time rebuilding that MCV, but he has the War Factory. The MCV is back out on the, on the map, and right now, they have equal numbers of refineries. The Tib Spike Snipe, courtesy of this Black Hand Squad in the north, is a nice advantage for Futurama. But as you mentioned, it was so much priority on aggression from Futurama. His economy suffered so heavily because of it, and his economy will continue to be slow to grow on account of the second war factory he's deployed in his main base. I mean, yeah, Pichon has gone to Warp Factory now, and he's only on four harvesters. Has he got a blue tip harvester? No, he hasn't. So he's on a four harvesters still. He's still going for a really aggressive play. Um, and Shock, I mean, he's on four harvesters as well, but yeah, he's got pools here. And that's a fully the heroic, heroic bike? bike as well, yeah! Now we go, oh, crane. crane! Not the, the crane, crane again! Oh no, not again! <laughs> it's crane almost, it's gonna be dealt, or it's gonna be cleaned up almost as fast as it was on that other game. <laughs> Heroic Bike does get targeted. A little bit of a dive there from these pit bulls, but the rest of the bike buggy will set up on the pit bulls and clean them up. You hope he's got a better defense back behind that. It's a GG, and Shark Trepid gets unceremoniously decapitated by Futurama. The MCV gets killed, and the pain doesn't stop there as Futurama rolls that into a 4-3 win. The series will end with Futurama as the victor. Damn, what a series. What a series. That last game really exploding in action. It's like two minutes of calm, and then the flame tank hits, and it is unfortunately downhill from there. Shock Trepid with a huge cash advantage and no real way to take advantage of it. Lots of cash in the bank, not a lot of units on the field. I just didn't see how he's going to lose those bikes. I would have thought he prioritized them, but he just like, ugh, I don't know. Very odd gameplay for Shot Trooper then, but Future Armor makes, makes it work, definitely. So well played to him. Big huge thanks to Abidjit for sponsoring this uh, this show match, this best of seven, and of course his dog Yoshi Morasan. And big thanks to Guaspari for joining me on this cast. Thank you very much for helping out with this series. If you guys want to check out Guaspari, check out his Twitch. It'll be linked in the description. Great Kane's Wrath content over there. Awesome, yeah, thank you for having me. It's been an awesome series, awesome cast. First time dual casting, not on a uh, live stream, so interesting to see how it all works. Yeah, thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and this is Cyber signing out.